What is a sample in statistics? A sample is a generalization about a population and is represented by a group of units selected from the population, also called a subset of the population. The sample is meant to be representative of the population. Thus, in many studies, there are many possible samples. There are also types of samples, such as a matched sample, in which two of the members are paired, an example would be the IQ of twins. There is often a good reason for taking samples of a population. Most of the time, a population is too large to study as a whole. For example, take the smaller example of the above population of 10 cats. Again, none of them are identical, but certain common features between the cats can be measured. Including color, fur length, and weight. If data is collected about the fur length of the 10 cats, the population. Then if we chose only to take the cats with long fur, that would be a sampling. Another example is the population for a study of physical condition of all children born in the United States in the 1970s. The sample could be all children born on July 5th in any of those years. What are the two ways of looking at the derivative? There are two major ways of looking at the derivative of the geometrical or the slope of a curve, and the physical, the rate of change. How are modeling and simulation used in engineering? Modeling and simulation have become an essential part of engineering on both a small and large scale. Because building any size of structure takes time and money. Engineers often develop a mathematical model, a set of equations that describe what may happen to a structure if it is built the way it is represented by the model. Using a computer, or graphic, representation gives the engineers a three-dimensional view. For example, before the space shuttle was built. Engineers used mathematical modeling to simulate what the craft would look like in three dimensions. In this way, the engineers learned how the shuttle would fly. How strong the heat-resistant tiles had to be in order to re-enter the Earth's atmosphere. And even how to maneuver the shuttle under various conditions as it landed. The computer was the only way to solve such problems without real-life testing. It quickly and easily solved a plethora of mathematical equations especially calculus and differential equations that represented how the shuttle would take off, fly, and land. What are some terms to know when getting a credit card? There are several terms many that include a bit of mathematics one should know when. Getting a credit card. An important one is the annual fee. 
which is often charged by the credit card company and is a flat, yearly charge similar to a membership fee. A finance charge is the dollar amount you pay to use credit. It should be listed on your credit card statement. It usually includes the interest on the borrowed money and other charges associated with transactions. Such as cash advance fees or exchange rate calculation fees when paying for an item in a foreign country. As stated in the question above, the annual percentage rate, APR, is a measure of the cost, or relative cost, of credit on a yearly basis. With credit cards, APR commonly includes interest and other charges, such as a yearly rate. Credit cards often offer two types of interest rates, too. In the variable rate plan, as the name implies, the interest is variable. It is usually tied to other interest rates, such as the treasury bill or prime rates. A fixed rate plan is a rate not tied to changes in other interest rates, it remains steady. Unless the credit company raises or lowers rates for everyone, which they can periodically do. What are some numbers associated with tire pressure? Tire pressure is measured using a tire pressure gauge. With the most common measuring device being about the size of a pen. First, a bit about pressure. The atmosphere at the surface of our planet measures about 14.7 pounds. 6.67 kilograms per square inch, or a 1 inch, 2.54 centimeters, square column of air weighs 14.7 pounds. This changes depending on the altitude. For example, at an altitude of 10,000 feet, 3,048 meters. The air pressure decreases to 10.2 pounds, 4.63 kilograms, per square inch. But a car, truck, SUV, or bike tire needs more pressure in order to inflate. By increasing the number of atoms inside the tire, there are more collisions between the atoms and more pressure exerted on the sides of the tire. In other words, a pump stuffs more air into a constant volume. The confines of the tire, so the air pressure within the tire rises. A car tire's pressure is typically at about 30 pounds, 13.61 kilograms, per square inch. A bicycle tire's pressure can be around 90 pounds, 40.82 kilograms, per square inch. How does modular arithmetic work? In modular arithmetic, numbers wrap around when they reach a fixed quantity. This is also called the modulus thus the name modular arithmetic with the standard way of writing the form as mod 12 or mod 2. In this case, if the two numbers be, also called the base, and c, also called the remainder, are subtracted, bc, and their difference is a number integrally divisible by m. Or, bc, slash m, then b, and c are said to be congruent modulo m. Mathematically, b is congruent to c, modulo m, 
is written as follows, with the symbol for congruence. Smiley face, B equals C, mod M, but if BC is not integrally divisible by M. Then it is said, B is not congruent to C, modulo M, or B dash equals C, mod M, more formally. Modular arithmetic includes any non-trivial homomorphic image of the ring of integers. We can interpret this interesting definition using a clock. The modulus would be the number 12 on the clock, arithmetic modulo 12. With an associated ring labeled C12 and the allowable numbers being 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, and 11. Another example is arithmetic modulo 2, with an associated ring of C2, or allowable numbers of 1 and 2. What is a coordinate system? A coordinate system is one that uses coordinates a number or numbers that identify a point on a number line, plane, or in space. These points are most often seen on a graph and can be a combination of two numbers for a two-dimensional figure or three numbers for three dimensions. How is mathematics important to electrical engineering? There are many branches of mathematics that are important to electrical engineering. For example, abstract math is used in communication and signal processing. Complex differential equations solving equations involving derivatives are used in circuit theory and systems design. Also in circuit theory, engineers need to know algebra and trigonometry. Engineers who deal with electromagnetism need to know calculus, especially Maxwell's equations. For more about Maxwell, see Math in the Physical Sciences. Why was Alan Turing so important to the development of computers? Living in his native England during World War II. Alan Turing was instrumental in deciphering German messages encrypted by the Enigma cipher machine. Shortly after the war, he designed computers first for the British government. 1945 to 1948, then for the University of Manchester, 1948 to 1954. He also wrote several works on the field of artificial intelligence. A study in its infancy at the time, and developed the theory of the Turing test. In which a computer is tested to see if it is capable of human-like thought. Tragically, Turing, who is often considered the founder of computer science, committed suicide in 1954. What are time zones? Time zones are any of the 24 regions on the globe, loosely divided by longitude but more erratic in their demarcations. Which is divided according to the number of hours in a day.
Within each zone, all clocks are set to the same time. Time zones include the International Date Line, an imaginary line of longitude generally 180 degrees east or west of the prime meridian. The date becomes one day earlier to the east of this line. Time zones are truly a product of mathematics. Initially, people used local solar time, resulting in slightly different times between towns. With technology especially trains and telecommunications more accurate timekeeping became a necessity. Thus, time zones helped solve many of the problems by setting the clocks of a region to the same mean solar time. The time zones made it easy for neighboring time zones to be labeled one hour apart. Not that the system is perfect. The hour separation is not universal. And because they often follow political boundaries, the shapes of the time zones can be extremely irregular. What were Aristotle's syllogisms? Syllogisms, which are often attributed to Aristotle, are the verbal versions of the formal deductive rules for logic. Aristotle believed that any logical argument could be explained in these standard forms. He divided them into a major premise, all squirrels eat nuts, a minor premise. Fred is a squirrel, and a conclusion derived by a rule of logic, Fred eats nuts. The classical syllogism is, all men are mortal. Socrates is a man. Therefore Socrates is mortal. This form of logic called syllogistic logic would dominate Western cultural thought for more than 2,000 years. How are the terms outcome, sample space, and event related? These terms are definitely related, the outcome is the result of an experiment or other type of situation involving uncertainty. And the set of all possible outcomes is a sample space. Just as important are events, which are collections of the outcomes of an experiment. Or any subset of the sample space. If there is only one single outcome in the sample space, it is called an elementary or simple event. Events with more than one outcome are called compound events. What are some standard measurement units and their definitions? For a helpful list of standard measurement units and systems for converting them to other types of units. See Appendix 1 in the back of this book. What is a proof? A proof is simply the process of showing a theorem to be correct. Although the process itself might not be simple. These mathematical arguments are often quite rigorous. And they are used to demonstrate the truth of a given proposition. The result of the proved statement is a theorem. 
Interestingly enough, there are several computer systems now being developed to automate proofs. But some mathematicians, mostly purists, do not believe these computer-assisted proofs are valid. They believe that only humans can understand the nuances and have the intuition needed to develop a theorem's proof. One good example is called the four-color theorem. Its proof relies on meticulous computer testing of many separate cases, all of which can't be verified by hand. What are Napier's bones? A tool called Napier's bones, also called Napier's rods, was invented by Scottish mathematician John Napier, 1550-1617. These were multiplication tables inscribed on strips, also called rods. A bone, not napiers, but animal bone, ivory, or wood. He published the idea in his book Rabdologia, which contained a description of the rods that aided in multiplication, division, and the extraction of square roots. For more about Napier, see Algebra. Each bone is a multiplication table for a single digit, with the digit appearing at the top of its bone. As seen below, consecutive, non-zero products of this digit are carved in the rod. With each product occupying a single cell. For example, to multiply 63 by 6, the two bones or rods corresponding to 6 and 3 would be put alongside each other and would look like the illustration below. The first number would be the number in the diagonal at the 6th position, 3, then the product or solution, is evaluated diagonally, or by adding the two numbers diagonal from each other or 7, 6 plus 1, and the next number in the separate diagonal, or 8. In other words, 63x6 equals 378. Initially, the tables were used by merchants to speed up calculations. German astronomer and mathematician Wilhelm Schickard 1592 to 1635 would eventually build the first calculating machine based on Napier's bones in 1623. His device could add, subtract, and with help, multiply or divide. This is why he is often called the father of the computing era. See below. What are left and right limits? When a function is not defined around the point C, see the notation in the equation above. But only to the left or right of point C, then the limits are called the left limit and right limit at C. How can a person calculate the amount of carpeting needed to redecorate a room in a house? Watching remodeling programs on television, visiting someone else's house, or even getting cabin fever in the winter often triggers the need to redecorate from floor to ceiling.
How do you find the roots of a polynomial? Finding the root, also called a zero, of a polynomial is one way to solve for the equation. In other words, the root of an equation is simply a number, or numbers, that solves the equation. For example, for second degree polynomials we can find the roots by completing the square. Picking apart an equation is the best way to see this, 1 3 x 2 4 x plus 1 equals 0 2. 1 3rd, 3 x 2 4 x plus 1, equals. 1 3rd, 0, making the coefficient of the x2 term into a 1, 3. x2, 4 thirds, x plus 1 third equals 0 4. x2, 4 thirds, x. plus 1 third equals 0, group the x and x2 terms together, 5. x2, 4 thirds, x plus, minus 2 thirds, 2, minus 2 thirds, 2 plus 1 third equals 0, determine the coefficient of the x term. Divide it by 2 and then square, add and subtract that term, 6. x 2 thirds, 2 4 ninths plus 1 third equals 0, x 2 thirds, 2 1 ninth equals 0, add together the 4 ninths plus 1 third by converting the denominator to 9, in which 1 third becomes 3 ninths x 2 thirds, 2 equals 1 ninth, move the 1 ninth to the other side of the equation by subtracting it from both sides. 9 x 2 thirds equals 1 third or x 2 thirds equals minus 1 third that means that x equals 1 or x equals 1 third are the two roots that make the equation true. Just substitute either number into the initial equation to see that they are both true. How did early painters integrate mathematics and painting? Early painters had a problem, how to represent the three-dimensional world on a two-dimensional canvas. Or, how to give paintings depth and perspective. Although perspective does follow mathematical guidelines. Many early painters were able to incorporate perspective, or depth perception, intuitively. The idea of perspective flourished around the time of the ancient Greeks. Who used a form of perspective to design certain architectural structures and even theatrical stage settings but it is unclear whether they actually understood the mathematics behind perspective. One of the first to create the impression of depth by using certain rules was Italian painter, sculptor, and architect Giotto di Bondone, c. 1267-1337. But those rules were of his own devising and were probably not based on mathematics. Whatever the case, he clearly worked out a way to represent depth in space. And he came close to understanding linear perspective. But it took until the Renaissance before painters explored the science behind perspective. In the early 1400s, sculptor Filippo Brunelleschi, 1377-1446, made the first correct formulation of linear perspective using mirrors. He understood that there was a single vanishing point to which all parallel lines in a plane or on his canvas, converge, he also understood scales, calculating the relationship between the actual length of an object and its length in the picture, depending on its distance in the painting. 
writer and mathematician Leone Battista Alberti, 1404-1472, was the first person to write the rules of perspective in 1435. Using the principles of geometry and the science of optics. By 1450 artist and mathematician Piero della Francesca, 1412-1492, had written an even more extensive mathematical work on perspective. Including concepts of art, arithmetic, algebra, and geometry. The writings of mathematician Luca Paciola, c. 1447-c. 1517, or Friar Luca dal Borgo who was also known as the father of accounting, see below, delved more into perspective. Including in his book De Divina Proportion, which relied heavily on Francesca's work. The illustrations in Paciola's book were done by none other than the famous scientist, painter, and Renaissance figure Leonardo da Vinci, 1452-1519, who was himself a great contributor to the study of perspective. Paciola was one of da Vinci's teachers. And he instructed the eventual great master a good deal about proportion and perspective. What are the measures of central tendency? The measures of central tendency are statistics that describe the grouping of values. In a data set around a common value that in some way represents a typical member. They are broken down into four types, median, mode, average. Also called the arithmetic mean, and the geometric mean. What are some terms used in the Cartesian coordinate system and graphs? There are numerous terms used in the Cartesian coordinate system. Besides the ones already mentioned, the following are some of the most common. An intercept is a point's distance on a coordinate system axis. From the origin to where a curve or surface intersects the axis. On a graph, the x-intercept and y-intercept are two important features that show where a line cuts through the x and y-axis, respectively. The origin is the fixed point from which measurements are taken. In most cases especially in a standard. Simple two-dimensional Cartesian coordinate system this means the point that represents zero. This is often seen as, 0, 0, or the point in which the x and y axes intersect on a graph. In a three-dimensional system, the coordinates are often seen as, 0, 0, 0. A Cartesian plane, or coordinate plane, is described as a two-dimensional space made up of points that are identified by their relation to the origin, 0, and the x and y axes. An axis, the plural is axis, is a reference line used in a graph or a coordinate system, such as the Cartesian system. For example, the x axis and y axis are perpendicular lines on a graph in a two dimensional system. In a three-dimensional system, they are the x-axis, y-axis, and z-axis. 
collinear points are those that lie on a straight line. Any two points are considered collinear because a straight line passes through both. Many procedures in analytic geometry involve determining the collinear points that represent coordinates that solve an equation. Logically, those points that do not lie on the same line or, in other words, that do not solve the equation are called non-collinear points. What does the word parallel mean in geometry? In geometry, parallel means two lines in two-dimensional Euclidean space that do not intersect. Or two lines in the same plane that never meet and that maintain the same distance from each other at every point. In three-dimensional Euclidean space, these lines also do not intersect. Maintaining a constant separation between points closest to each other on the two lines. In analytic geometry, parallel means those lines with the same slope, as well as other curves with the same slope for every x value. The symbol for parallel lines is. For example, AB means that line A is parallel to line B. How is a decision problem connected to algorithms? A decision problem is also known as an Entscheidungsproblem, which stems from the German. Decision problems bring up the question of whether an algorithm represents a specific mathematical assertion or not. As well as whether it has or does not have a proof. What does the greatest common factor mean? The greatest common factor, or GCF, sometimes called highest common factor of two whole numbers is the largest whole number that is a factor of both take for example the numbers 12 and 15 the factors of 12 are 1 2 3 4 6 and 12 the factors of 15 are 1 3 5 and 15 therefore the common factors or numbers in both lists of factors are 1 and 3, and the greatest. Highest, common factor in this case is 3. There is another method used to discover the GCF. Listing the numbers prime factors, then multiplying those numbers. For example, the prime factorizations of 12 and 15 are, 2x 2x 3 equals 12 and 3x 5 equals 15. Notice that the prime numbers have 3 in common, thus, the GCF is 3. An example with larger numbers is to find the GCF of 36 and 54. Working it out by the first method. The factors of 36 are 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, 9, 12, 18, and 36. The factors of 54 are 1, 2, 3, 6, 9, 18, 27, and 54. The greatest, or highest. Common factor of both numbers is to work it out using prime factorization. The prime factorization of 36 is 2x2x3x3, 
the prime factorization of 54 is 2x3x3x3. 3 x 3 x 3. Both these factorizations have 1 2 and 2 3s in common. Thus, we multiply those common numbers, or 2x3x3 equals 18. What is a linear equation? As the term suggests, linear equations have to do with lines, and in algebra. A linear equation means certain equations, or functions, whose graph is a line. For an extensive explanation of graphs, see geometry and trigonometry. More specifically, in algebra, a linear equation is one that contains simply the variable. Which makes them one of the simplest types of equations. For example, a linear equation in one variable has one unknown, the variable, represented by a letter. This letter, usually x, is always to the power of 1, meaning there is no x2 or x3 in the equation. For instance, x plus 3 equals 9 is a simple linear equation. To solve such an equation, one must either add, subtract, multiply, and slash or divide both sides of the equation by numbers and variables and do this in the correct order to end up with a solution. A single variable and single number on opposite sides of the equals sign. In this case, the solution to the linear equation is x equals 6. Finally, linear equations can be further broken down. For example, in the linear equation x plus by plus c z plus d w equals h, in which a, b, c, and d are known numbers and x, y, z, and w are unknown numbers, if h equals 0, the linear equation is said to be homogeneous. Have there been different types of abaci over the centuries? Yes, there have been many different types of abaci over the centuries. Including the Roman abaci mentioned above. The first type of abacus came into use in China about 1300 and was called a suan pen. Historians do not agree as to whether it was a Chinese invention or not. Some say it came from Japan via Korea. Although merchants used this type of abacus for standard addition and subtraction operations. It could also be used to determine square and cube roots of numbers. The Japanese abacus, or saraban, was similar to the Chinese abacus. But it eliminated one bead each from the upper and lower deck in each column. Thus, it is more similar to the Roman abacus. The Russians also have their own version of an abacus, it uses 10 beads on each wire, and a single deck. The separation in the wires is created by one wire with fewer beads. What were some early measurements of volume in terms of the gallon? The names of the traditional volume units are the names of standard containers. Until the 18th century, 
the capacity of a container was difficult to accurately measure in cubic units. Thus, the standard containers were defined by the weight of a particular substance such as wheat or beer that the container could carry. For example, the basic English unit of volume, or the gallon, was originally defined as the volume of 8 pounds of wheat. Other volumes were measured based on this gallon. Depending on the different standard sizes of the containers. But like most measurements over time, not all gallons were alike. During the American colonial period, the gallons from British commerce were based on dry and liquid commodities. For dry, the gallon was one eighth of a Winchester bushel, defined by the English Parliament in 1696 as a cylindrical container 18.5 inches in diameter by 8 inches deep which held 268.8 cubic inches of material. It was also called a corn gallon in England. For liquid, in England the gallon measurement was based on Queen Anne's wine gallon. Also called the traditional British wine gallon, which measured exactly 231 cubic inches. This is why volume measurements in the United States include both the dry and liquid units. The dry units being about one-sixth larger than the corresponding liquid units. By 1824, the British weren't as satisfied with the gallon divisions as the Americans. In response, the British Parliament abolished all the traditional gallons and established a system based on the imperial gallon. It is still in use today, measuring 277.42 cubic inches, with the container holding exactly 10 pounds of water under specific, such as temperature and pressure, conditions. What is an algorithm? The word algorithm is a distortion of Muhammad ibn Musa al khwarizmis name, 783 c. 850, also seen as al khwarizmi and al khwarizmi the Persian mathematician who wrote about algebraic methods. For more about al khwarizmi see History of Mathematics. In general, an algorithm is a specific set of instructions that if followed correctly, will lead to a recognizable end result. Simply put, a recipe is an example of an algorithm. For example, if there are two different recipes for making apple pie one calling for cutting fresh apples for the filling. The other calling for apples from a can the end results will be the same, an apple pie. In mathematics, most algorithms include a finite sequence of steps that repeat. Or require decisions using logic and comparisons until the final result is found, often called a computation. The best example is the long division algorithm. In which the remainders of partial divisions are carried to the next digit or digits. For example, in the division of 1347 by 8, a remainder of 5 in the division of 13 by 8 is placed in front of the 4, and 8 is then divided into 54, and so on. More advanced use of algorithms are found in a type of logic called metamathematics, see below.
What is interest and how is it calculated? In finance, interest can be viewed in two ways, the interest given to a person on money loaned to deposited in, a bank or financial institution, or as a fee, payment. For borrowing or lending money, most often based on a percentage of the requested amount. The two most common types of interest are simple and compound. For more information on interest, see Everyday Math. In terms of a savings account, the interest is usually compounded, which means that any interest earned is reinvested or compounded, to generate even more money, and thus increase future interest. Tick. For example, a person starting with $1,000 in a money market fund earning 5% per year with quarterly interest payments. Or the person gets 5% divided by 4, or 1.25% per quarter. After one year, the $1,000 has grown to $1,050.95, making the compound interest rate actually 5.095% not 5.00% because interest was also paid on the accumulated interest for each quarter. An interest of 5% only is called the simple interest rate. But most banking institutions pay compound interest on savings. Simple and compound interest are both used in borrowing and lending. With simple interest, the interest is paid strictly on the amount of the initial principal. Original amount borrowed or lent, which is usually represented by the formula, A, T, equals A, 0, 1 plus RT. In which A, T, is the sum of the principal and interest at the time T for a constant interest rate R. Compound interest has a more complex formula. This type of interest is calculated not only on the initial principal, but also the interest accumulated, or accrued, over time. For example, a person purchases a home for $250,000 and pays $50,000 as a down payment. The remaining $200,000 is taken out as a loan at 8% interest for 30 years. Compounded monthly, with equal monthly payments. The monthly mortgage payment, M, in which P is the principal, I is the interest rate, N is the number of years, and Q is the number of pay periods per year, would be, M equals pi slash Q, 1 1 plus, I slash Q, N Q, equals, $200,000, 0 0.08, slash, 12, 1 1 plus, 0 0.08 slash 12, dash, 30, 12, equals, $1,333.33333 slash 11.00666666 dash 360 equals $1,467. What is the standard deviation? The standard deviation is considered by some to be the second most important statistic, or statistical measure. In the field, it is the measure of how much the individual observations are scattered about the mean. In general, the more widely values are spread out, the larger the standard deviation. 
For example, if the test results for two different exams taken by 50 people in a geology class range from 30 to 98 percent for the first exam and 78 to 95 percent for the second exam. The standard deviation is larger for the first list of exams. This spread dispersion of a data set is calculated by taking the square root of the variance. Why do weather reports sometimes say the humidity is 100% when there is no rain or snow falling? A reading of 100% humidity usually means there is a high probability that rain will be or is occurring, but not always. It might be 100% RH because clouds are forming. If the RH near the ground is much less for example. If a relatively dry air mass is in place there will be no rain at the surface. This is why Doppler radar sometimes shows rain or snow. In an area when none is actually reaching the ground. What is the concept of bound? Similar to sequences, see elsewhere in this chapter, in calculus bounds are divided into the upper. Either greater than or equal to every other number in a set of numbers or greater than or equal to all the partial sums of a sequence, or lower, less than or equal to every other number. The symbol for infinity, OO, is used to denote a set of numbers without bound. Or that increase or decrease to infinity. In calculus, the bounds can be divided even more into greatest or least. For example, the greatest lower bounds and least upper bounds are of special interest to calculus. As those numbers may or may not be found within a set. What is the sieve of Eratosthenes? The smallest prime numbers those less than 1 million can be determined. Using something invented circa 240 BCE, the sieve of Eratos thence. This method was named after astronomer and mathematician Eratos thence of Cyrene, 276 to 196 BCE. Who was actually more famous for calculating the circumference of the Earth than for his work with prime numbers? To determine primes using this method, make a list of all the integers less than or equal to n. Numbers greater than 1, and get rid of all the multiples of all primes less than or equal to the square root of n. The numbers that are left are all primes. For example, to determine primes less than 100, start with 2 as the first prime. Then write all odd numbers from 3 to 100, there is no need to write the even numbers. Take 3 as the first prime and cross out all its multiples in the numbers you listed. Take the next number, 5, and then 7, and cross out all their multiples. By the time you reach 11, many numbers will be eliminated and you will have reached a number greater than the square root of 100, 
11 is greater than 10, the square root of 100. Thus, all the numbers you have left will be primes. What are hyperbolic and elliptical geometry? Hyperbolic and elliptical geometry are the non-Euclidean alternative geometries mentioned above. The first alternative is to allow two parallels through any particular external point or hyperbolic geometry. This studies two rays extending out in either direction from a point P and not meeting a line L, thus, the rays are considered to be parallel to L. This also helps prove the theorem that the sum of the angles of a triangle is less than 180 degrees. It is called hyperbolic because a line in the hyperbolic plane has two points at infinity. This is similar to drawing a hyperbola that has two asymptotes. The second alternative, called elliptical geometry, has no parallels to a given line L through an external point P. In addition, the sum of a triangle's angles is greater than 180 degrees. Sometimes called Riemann's geometry, who developed the idea even further, see below. It is called elliptic in general because a line in the plane of this geometry has no point at infinity. Where parallels may intersect it, which is similar to an ellipse that has no asymptotes. For more information about hyperbolas, ellipses, and asymptotes, see elsewhere in this chapter. What is arithmetic? Arithmetic is a branch of mathematics that deals with numerical computation, specifically. It includes computation using integers, rational numbers, real numbers, or complex numbers. The word arithmetic has its roots in the Greek word for to count. Arithmian, also arithmos, or number. Arithmetic contains all the rules for combining two or more numbers. In most cases, when mathematicians talk about elementary arithmetic, they are speaking of those subjects most of us learned in grade school, addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division being the most common, and fractions, geometry, and measurements. Ratios and proportion, simple probabilities, and algebra examined in more advanced levels. For even more advanced students, such arithmetic lessons as congruence calculation, Root extraction, power computations, and advanced factorizations are often presented. What was the problem with the lunar-based calendars? Nothing is perfect especially a lunar month. The biggest drawback with using a lunar calendar is the fractional number of days, which makes a lunar calendar quickly go out of sync with the actual phases of the moon. The first month would be off by about a half a day, the next month a day, 
the next month, a day, and a half, and so on. One way to help solve the problem was to alternate 30 and 29 day months. But this, too, eventually made the calendars go out of sync. To compensate, certain cultures added, intercalations. Or subtracted, extracalations, days from their calendar. For example, for more than a thousand years, the Muslims' lunar calendar has had an intercalation of 11 extra days over a period of 30 years, with each year being 12 lunar months. This calendar is only out of sync about one day every 2,500 years, to see this. Mathematically speaking, the average length of a month over a 30-year period is figured out with the following equation. 29.5 x 360, plus 11 slash 360 equals 29.530556 days, in which 11 is the number of intercalated days. 360 is the number of months in a 30-year cycle, 12 months x 30 years. And 29.5 is the average number of days in the calendar month, or, 29 plus 30, slash 2. What is a cumulative distribution? A cumulative distribution is a plot of the number of observations that fall in or below an interval. For example, they are often used to determine where scores fall in a standardized test. For example, the x-axis, see bar graph illustration on next page, shows the intervals of scores. Such as the interval labeled 35 shows any score from 32.5 to 37.5, and so on. And the y-axis shows the number of students scoring in or below each interval. This graphically illustrates for the students, and teachers, how well they did on the test compared to other students. What is sabermetrics? Sabermetrics is the study of baseball using objective evidence, such as baseball statistics. It uses scientifically based data and various interpretation methods to explain why teams win and lose. Sabermetrics was taken from the acronym SABR, or the Society for American Baseball Research, and was coined by baseball historian, statistician, and writer Bill James, 1949. What is a finite element analysis? A finite element analysis, also known as FIA or finite element method, is a powerful tool to solve problems in engineering, especially for heat transfer, fluid mechanics, and mechanical system problems. The FIA consists of a computer model of a material or design that is stressed, the outcome is then analyzed for specific results. In reality, the computer is conducting a numerical analysis technique used for solving differential equations and relating it to stress in the engineering problem. 
This technique was first developed in 1943 by Richard Courant, 1888-1972, who used a form of FIA to find approximate solutions to vibrational systems. Early in the 1970s, only companies that owned expensive mainframe computers were using FIA. Including the aeronautic, automotive, defense, and nuclear industries. Since the mid-1990s, however, use of FIA has grown with the advent of faster and cheaper computers with more memory. The results are more accurate, too. Allowing various industries to analyze new product designs and refine existing products. Why is there such a demand for applied mathematics in the processing of images? The field of image processing has grown immensely in the past few decades. There is a great demand for an increase in efficient processing of images. Especially for multimedia, biology, and medicine. Such as enhancing the quality of electron microscope and MRI, magnetic resonance imaging, images. In addition, there is a great need to develop ways to store more and more information. Especially regarding methods in transmitting and processing the information used in computers and networks. All of these things require the use of several mathematical techniques and thus, the use of applied mathematics. How are points determined in a real estate transaction? And buying a home through a real estate group or bank. Points may be paid by the borrower at the time a loan is made. This is usually to get a lower interest rate. Because the lender often offers certain rate slash point combinations that may help the homeowner save money. Actually, points usually refer to the commission charged by the mortgage. Broker or the loan fee charged by the lender when the loan is made. Points can be also negative, in which case they are called rebates from the lender to the borrower and are often used by borrowers to defray other settlement costs. In general, each point is 1% of the loan amount. For instance, Three points would be equal to 3% of the total loan amount. There is no set number of points offered by a lender, as it is not controlled by any laws. For example, on a $100,000 loan, one point is equal to $1,000, 10 points is equal to $10. 000 a homeowner looking for a loan should try to find a mortgage broker or lender that charges fewer points. Some financial institutions might even be willing to negotiate for lower points. But beware of lenders offering no or zero points. Because they usually charge much higher interest rates than those offering loans with points. Although it is a matter of mathematics and a person's budget. There are some very general guidelines when choosing a mortgage. Low rate, high point loans are usually used by borrowers who can meet the down payment cash requirement. And either want to stay in a house a long time or want to reduce their monthly mortgage payments. 
high rate, low point combinations are for borrowers who don't expect to be in their houses very long, or who are short on cash. What is division? The word divide comes from the Latin root vidua, referring to a separation. The word divide shares its major root with the word widow, and di, a prefix that is a contraction of dis, meaning apart or away. In division, the number being divided is called the dividend. While the number dividing it is called the divisor. The end result is called the quotient. For example, in 20 fifths equals 4, 20 is the dividend, 5 the divisor, and 4 the quotient. Division in mathematics is a relatively new concept for the masses. It was only taught at university levels after the 16th century. The first to offer division to the public was German mathematician Adam Reis. 1492-1559, also seen as Riz, 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 or R-I-S, in his work Reaching und Nachter Lenge. Auf den Linehan VND, Sick, Fetter, often shortened to Practica. His work reached more people for an important reason, instead of the usual practice of writing a mathematical book in Latin. He wrote his book in German, thus reaching a wider audience. What does the strange symbol IFF mean in calculus? He symbol, or word, IFF actually is shorthand for if and only if. It is not only mathematics that depends on the IFF, but also philosophy, logic, and many technical fields. It is usually italicized, in addition. The phrase P is necessary and sufficient for Q is also seen as QIFFP. The corresponding logical symbols for if and only if are, and equals. But for those who study calculus, it is an area of mathematics pioneered by Gottfried Leibniz. His idea was based purely on the concept of infinitesimals. This was in opposition to the calculus of Isaac Newton, who based his calculus on the concept of the limit. Although historically the emphasis was placed on the minute. Modern infinitesimal calculus actually has little to do with infinitely small quantities. What are some rules for combining exponents? There are also rules for combining exponents, called the laws of indices. To multiply exponents with identical bases, add the exponents, such as 32x33 equals 35, 3 is the base. To multiply like exponents, combine terms, such as 102x22 equals 10x2, 2 equals 400. To divide identical bases. Subtract the exponents, such as 103 slash 10 equals 103 to 1 equals 102 equals 100, the denominator 10 has an assumed exponent of 1.
How has math been used historically in architecture? Historically, there has been a great connection between architecture and mathematics. Ancient mathematicians were architects and vice versa, using their skills to build pyramids, temples, aqueducts, cathedrals, and a range of other architectural structures we find beautiful and awesome today. For example, in ancient Greece and Rome, architects were required to also be mathematicians. During medieval times, most buildings and structures carried some symbolic reference to the church. The mathematical end of architecture was almost forgotten during this time. By the European Renaissance around 1400, a new kind of architecture developed that emphasized mass and interior space to produce aesthetically pleasing pictures similar to those found in paintings and sculptures. This led to an entirely new way of looking at architecture and altered its connection to mathematics. What is solid geometry? Solid geometry is the study of objects in three-dimensional Euclidean space. It deals with solids, as opposed to plane geometry, which deals with two dimensions. This part of geometry is concerned with entities such as polyhedra, spheres, cones, cylinders, and so on. For more about Euclidean space and dimensions, see elsewhere in this chapter. In geometry, solids are defined as closed three-dimensional figures. Or any limited portion of space bounded by surfaces. They differ in subtle ways from what we perceive as solids. We see solids in terms of what surrounds us three-dimensional figures with their surfaces the actual objects we perceive. Geometric solids are actually the union of the surface and regions of space. In a way, this adds another dimension to two-dimensional space. What is the purpose of the numbers found in a mailing address? The Zone Improvement Plan, or ZIP, code is a grouping of numbers assigned by the U.S. Postal Service to designate a local area or entity in order to speedily deliver and distribute mail. ZIP codes most often refer to a street section, a collection of streets, a structure or building, or a group of post office boxes. But the numbers do not rigidly conform to boundaries of cities, counties, states, and other places. Depending on the area, a zip code includes 5, 7, 9, or 11 digits. In the most common codes 5-digit zip codes the first digits divide the country into 10. Large groups of states numbered from 0 in the northeast to 9 in the far west. Each state is divided into geographic areas identified by the second and third digits of the zip code. For example, New York and Pennsylvania have zip codes starting with numbers between 090 and 199, Indiana, Kentucky, Michigan, and Ohio begin with numbers between 400 and 499 The fourth and fifth digits of a zip code identify the local delivery area.
What do blood pressure numbers mean? Blood pressure is a measure of how much the blood presses against the walls of the arteries. This creates two forces, the first comes from when the heart pumps blood into the arteries. The second is the force of the arteries to resist the blood flow. When a person takes a blood pressure, he or she is taking a ratio, the higher number, called the systolic or top number. Represents the pressure when the heart contracts to pump blood to the body, the lower number. Called the diastolic or bottom number, represents the pressure when the heart relaxes between beats. For example, for a blood pressure of 120-76, said, 120 over 76. The systolic reading is 120 and the diastolic reading is 76. In actuality, the numbers represent how high the blood's pressure would force a column of mercury to rise in a tube. For example, a systolic reading of 120 means the mercury would rise 120 millimeters. Usually labeled MMHG, with HG the symbol for mercury, in a tube. Based on the most recent information, and it keeps changing, a blood pressure below 120-80 is considered optimal for adults. 120 to 139 over 80 to 89 is considered pre-hypertension. Anything over 140-90 is considered hypertension, which includes three stages. With the highest hypertension reading, stage 3, being anything above 179-109. Is it possible to simplify logarithms? Yes, as in algebraic equations, it is possible to simplify logarithms, but in different ways. The following lists some examples, to simplify log 3, x, plus log 3, y, equals log 3, x, y. To simplify log 3, 6, log 3, 4, equals log 3, 6 fourths, to simplify 2 log, x, equals log, x2. What are the lotka Volterra Interspecific Competition Logistic Equations? The lotka Volterra Interspecific Competition Logistic Equations are concerned with the Predator-prey relationships between species in the environment and are based on differential equations, for more on differential equations, see mathematical analysis. Such predator-prey theories were developed independently by then Austrian, now the Ukraine. Chemist, demographer, ecologist, and mathematician Alfred James Lotka. 1880-1949, and Italian mathematician Vito Volterra, 1860-1940, in 1925. They refer to interspecific competition. Or the competition between two or more species for some limiting resource, such as food, nutrients. Space, mates, nesting sites, or anything in which the demand is greater than the supply. Most people think about the AQI in terms of being outdoors and most. 
weather broadcasts include air quality listings, especially in larger cities. When the readings are high, people are warned not to participate in strenuous activities like sports or hard work outside. People with asthma or other lung problems are urged to stay inside. Are there different types of proofs? There are several different types of proofs in mathematical logic. Direct proofs are based on rules that result in one true proposition from two propositions. They show that a given statement is true by simply combining. Existing theorems with or without some mathematical manipulations. For example, if you have two sides of a triangle with the same length. A definition and theorem show that a line bisecting their vertex produces two congruent. Triangles a direct proof that the angles at the other two vertices have the same size. In logic, Indirect proofs are also called proofs by contradiction and are known in Latin as reductio ad absurdum, reduced to an absurdity. This type of proof initially assumes that the opposite of what you are trying to prove is true. From this assumption, certain conclusions can be drawn. One then searches for a conclusion that is false because it contradicts given or known information. Sometimes, a given piece of information is contradicted, which shows that. Since the assumption leads to a false conclusion, the assumption must be false. If the assumption is false, the opposite of the conclusion one is trying to prove. Then it is known that the goal conclusion must be true. All of this has therefore been shown indirectly. Finally, a DISP roof is a single instance that contradicts a proposition. For example, the DISP roof of all primes are odd is. The true statement the number 2 is a prime and not odd. If a DISP roof exists for a proposition, then the statement is false.